Яг ай юусаа тийм ээ. Такад юу хаан гүнэл чи шат я ади. Ах түү яг ай я та хөлгийн нэ я я гэцө. А та гэтэд ку аха ауди ган я я ги. Хэд ку а анчич ги хэд я те. Дэн ин аника. Good to see you all. Thank you for coming today. I feel good just gazing at your faces. Uh, spring has arrived and it's sunny today in Anchorage. I'm here on Dena'ina lands. Kajin yagi ya 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 yagi. Atka de khit ya na disi yu du wasaog ya dis. Kajin ya wakhi. So today's Friday, May 5th. Um, this month is called Atka de khit ya na disi. And I'll talk more about that. And five days have passed this month. So go ahead and unmute your mics and repeat this after me. We'll start with just the last two words. Repeat after me. Yina disi. Yina disi. Yina disi. Okay. And um, I like that I can hear the difference in length and tone when you say that. That sounds good. Um, atka de khit will be an underline X for khit, and and then it's just two short A's. So repeat just this word after me. Gada khit. Gada khit. Gada khit. Uh, and then the whole thing starting with at, atka de khit yena disi. At gada khit yena disi. Yena disi. Uh, let's do it one more time. At Gadechit Yena Disi. So I'm in Anchorage, and um, one thing we look for this time of year are moose. We try to give them space. Um, I put a picture of a pregnant moose here. The meaning of At Gadechit Yena Disi is the month before the animals give birth so if someone asks you at the top what do people call this month you can tell them and that means the month before the animals give birth in anchorage it's a big deal because we live among the moose there we we um share the same land <laughs> they're in the city they're on the pathways i went for a run last week and i went around two of them um they're just it's kind of unique how used to people, the moose are um but you need to give them space like don't go to kincaid park in april or may uh in anchorage because that's where they give birth and they're really protective um so uh more information if you're interested in in names of the months, uh, for example, one place I always go is under the section for months, seasons, days, and time. It starts on page 19. And uh, this is a quick place to reference month names. Um, and then you can also find phrases that describe the changing of the seasons and time passing so for example another thing i told you was i'll zoom in because i know it's small it's getting um i said taki titkuaha and that's it's spring now if you wanted to say it's getting to be summer you can um, you could say So it's we're not quite there yet, but go ahead and repeat this phrase after me just for practice talking about the seasons. Um Okay. okay. So that's a little bit about the new month and spring arriving, and then we can look forward to it getting to be summer.
So for today, we're going to do a conversation practice. And then as I promised, we're going to have some practice doing domain reclamation around plants, specifically picking berries. And then I'll leave space for discussion at the end um, to talk about our next few classes as well. Conversation practice. I'll read at the top the, the phrase and y'all can just answer at the same time, unmute your mics, just pick a phrase from the bottom to respond. Hi. Okay. you in there, are you ready? Huh? Uh. Okay. Yakeyich satini. Wa esu yake Yeah, away. Yeah, away. Okay. Wasa Wa Wa e Ah, Oh, and one person you could hear said, so I asked, Wasayiti, how are you doing? And after you all responded, I heard one person ask me, what oh, wow. that at the bottom and that yeah. mm -hmm. you. And so that's why I answered, um, I feel happy too. So getting into plans, um, some of the things we talked about in our previous discussion for interest in plants are a mix of descriptors. So being able to describe plants, the fireweed is tall, the huckleberries are red. Um, I'll show you an example of talking about berries today. Plant anatomy words. This is something we might do for the next class. I haven't um, prepared anything around this yet, but we'll we can work on it. Um, focusing on native plants and then I prepared some phrases for what you do with plants like how to put up berries um, and then I'll show you how I how I put my phrases together and then other topics we mentioned are other plants or devil's club uh, that that was the name of April the month of true plant budding and then also seaweeds and water plants. So we'll make space for learning about these. Um, but I'm excited to share with you a little bit about domain reclamation because in, in native language revitalization, we call it domain reclamation. You might also hear it referred to as task-based learning. All it is is taking an activity and putting the language together to be able to talk about it and during the activity in your target language. So I'll show you some of the steps for doing this in Tlingit. So steps to domain reclamation. It takes a lot of work before you just show up with your berry bucket and expect to stay in the language. And so it the prep work involves first of all gathering language for your domain register your domain register is your list of vocabulary and terms in the language that you're going to study and practice before you embark on your berry picking adventure um, i like to pull from multiple resources for this so it's the phrases i put together for today include the various dictionaries, the phrase book, other publications, video recordings, audio recordings. Um, and what I like to do is compile them into a neat list and I'll show you how I did that. And then you create an example dialogue using what you found and then practice it. Um, so it'll be fun. I'll take you through the process and I started it for us and we can finish it together. The list of resources I used for today are, like I mentioned, the phrase book, 
klinget reinachsa, um, the dictionary, the online dictionary, and then this video that my friend Nawaya shared with me for talking about food. It's kaseich kajinaak haatkai kahakusti dot. That's the name of the video, and it's on YouTube. And um, I'll introduce it, and we'll watch it at the end. So starting out with berries, I separated my list into different topics because if you enter berries into the online Thinget dictionary, you'll, I spent several hours there and I realized, okay, I'm going to find so much in here, not just types of berries, but example sentences, how to prepare them. And I'll, I'll share it with you. So some of the berry types of berries I came up with so far. Um, we'll practice pronouncing these. Uh, first, I'll read them all, and then we'll practice them one by one. So, chakute, shak, kleok yade, kleok kahinte, shach kateko. And um, let's practice these one by one. So, drink water if you need. And you can unmute your mics and repeat after me for the first one. Uh, it has a pinched L at the end, so it, we we need to hear the bubbles in E. Yeah. So the first one, Hakute. Ah. Uh, and there's a rounded K W. Or it's a rounded K. That's a K W. So let's start with just the first half of it with the X, high tone A, K, W. Huck. 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 Uh -huh. And one more time. Huck. 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 Okay. And then just the last, the pinched L and high tone I. E. 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 Okay, one more time. Uh huh. A. Uh -huh. So the whole word. Uh, oh, berries. Next one's a lot easier. The word for the native name for strawberries. Uh, repeat after me. Shuck. 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 Uh, one more Shuck. time. Okay. One more time. Shuck. 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 Uh, raspberry. Clerk yadi. Clerk yadi. Yadi. Watermelon berry, Cleok Kahinti. Cleok Kahinti. And bog a cranberry, Shuchk Katleoko. I can hear your nice long. EI, that's high tone, and then your low tone short U, that sounds good. Uh, what other types of berries do folks want to be able to talk about? Mm, high bush? High bush cranberries. Or high, is that what you mean? High bush cranberries? Yeah. Okay. What else? Thumbleberries. Yeah. Blueberries, red huckleberries. Okay, let's start with these. Thimbleberries, salmon berries. Salmon berry, huckleberry. Thimbleberries. I... Oh, thimbleberries. And what about, isn't oh. there red hucks, blue hucks, and then a blueberry? Yeah, away. Blue huckleberry. So we have blueberry, red huckleberry, and blue huckleberry. Ah. 
Okay, okay. So let's start with these. And what I'm going to do is search them in the dictionary. So high bush cranberry, let's find it. And we have it listed here uh. as kahwek. Kahwek. Ah, okay. Kahwek. Okay, let's find blueberry. Oh, swamp blueberry. I'm going to add this one. Heron's beak. Grayish blue color of the heron's beak. Cool. And I'm going to specify this is a swamp blueberry. And then red huckleberry. Take a tongue. Uh, red huckleberry and salmonberry. Whisk on clear. That means tip of the bush berry. Oh, that's a cool way to describe it. Blue huckleberry. Let me try this huckleberry. Okay, huckleberry. Hi. Also sometimes called the blueberry is kanata. Kanata. Uh -huh. You'll, I hear this word a lot, I mean, in talking about, about berries, but also in the word for purple. Mm. In Tlinge, it means, uh, it's kanatakahini yacheti. It means like blueberry juice. Kanatakahini yacheti. So kanata. This is a cool thing I just learned today and went earlier this week. Um, the word for blueberry um if you look in the breakdown of it in the gloss here where it has ka dash na dash ta uh you can see under the square root sign that's the verb root and the word for blueberry is a verbal noun so it's an, a verb that is used as a noun um and anyway that's all to say it comes from ripe so kind of uh, comes from the word ripe and we'll see it again later, farther down our list that I put together for us. So kind of a uh, huckleberry. Okay. I'm just going to put huckleberry because I think huckleberry is blue and then the red huckleberry is clay mm -hmm. tongue. And then thimbleberry. Thimbleberry. This, okay, this search in the dictionary is so fun because you find recipes. Yeah. <laughs> um, we'll look at these steamed berries, but it even tells you if you want to make you can, what type of berry, green cranberries on the branch covered with thimbleberry branches, dipped in hot water and baked. Hmm. That's how you would make steamed berries. But let's keep looking for our word. Thimbleberry. Tig. Tig. Uh, thimbleberry. Tig. So let's practice these ones together. So the first one for high bush cranberry, repeat after me. Kahweg. Kahweg. Way. Uh, okay. Swamp blueberry. Slug blue. Slug blue. Okay. This one is cool. That's the blue heron. Is slug 
And then Lu Wu means his nose. Um, and again, that's in reference to the color of the swamp blueberries, how they're that lightish, bluish gray. Okay, red huckleberry, repeat after me. Play katunk. Play katunk. Mm -hmm. Salmonberry, we're going to see this related to the word for bush. As we saw in the dictionary, it means berry at the tip of the bush. So this first part, this was with a pinched S refers to the bush um so since we have a pinched s followed by a pinched x both of those sounds should sound sharp when we say what's on so the way i do a pinched s is just really kind of um bite my teeth on it and blow it out sharp and the way i like that shakhsani kik described it to me she goes i should really hear the s when you say it um so repeat after me what's on table and i missed my tone here so this should be let's do just this last word yeah we have high tone and then low tone so one more time, the whole phrase was on Tleko. Was on Tleko. Okay. Huckleberry Kanata. 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 One more time, Kanata. Kanata. Uh. And then thimbleberry is low tone. Uh, sometimes when I go to describe a pinched word, I mean, say a pinched word, I accidentally make it high tone because I'm so excited about pinching. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, <laughs> this one's low tone, but you have a pinched CH and then a pinched underline X. So that underline pinched X will sound like. <laughs> yeah. So repeat this word after me. Cheek. Cheek. Okay, one more time. Cheek. Cheek. Okay. Um, we're going to go through some of the other phrases, and they're not complete lists yet, but what we'll do is add to them if there's something we want to for our um, dialogue. So as I mentioned, that word for the salmonberry um, was on means berry at the tip of the bush. And I mentioned this what has to do with the berry bush. If we look at our plants related to berries, we have what's e. So repeat this after me. What's e. Okay. What's, 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 yeah, so Tleok is the word for berry, and then what's is its bush. Um, I added this word, Hudson Bay tea, because when I'm picking huckleberries, I'm surrounded by tea leaves and it smells so good. Mm -hmm. Um, and I, I wanted to add it so. The word for Hudson Bay tea, um, repeat after me. It's ik shaltin. Mm-hmm. One more time. It's ik shaltin. It's shaltin. Are there any other types of plants you imagine that you always run into when you pick berries? I can't think of any right now, but we can always come back to this. So when we describe the berries, like I'm starting to imagine now, okay, I'm thinking ahead about, I know what berry I'm gonna go for. I know what other plants I might see. I'm starting to envision the activity. 
And another thing I often talk about in English when I pick berries with friends is describing if they're ripe or if they're green. And I found these in the dictionary for us to talk about. So earlier I mentioned the word for blueberry or for huckleberry kind of duh, comes from the name to be ripe. And you see this common sound at the end, but now it's long and high. So kind of duh is short and high. Kawata is long and high. And you're saying it's ripe rather than talking about a berry that's ripe. You're rather than talking about the name of a berry. Okay. So if you want, if you're saying it's ripe, you can unmute your mic and repeat after me. Kawata. Kawata. Uh, uh, make A. Yeah, you have a lot, nice long double A. And then a short one and then a long high double A. So let's do that one again. Kawata. Kawata. If there if you went too early, like sometimes I go too early because I'm just excited to get out and look around and they're still green. Um the word for that is cut. So to say this word, you have a pinched T at the end, which means you're gonna snap your T. And you have an underlined pick pinch X. So it's gonna sound like cut. So go ahead and repeat the sound after me. Cut. Cut. Yeah. You sound good. And then the whole word cuddly cut. Um, I added a note on this one, and I'll do this sometimes if I'm learning a new concept or a new verb, but when we say they are green, we're describing the, the state that something is in, and so it's a verb. It, we're saying it's doing something, kind of. It's being green, and that's why you'll see in the resources, it'll break it down because verbs have moving parts and changing components that uh, change in order to give specific meaning. So um, I just put a note here for people who are starting to study verbs and how to change them. Um, your verb root is cut, and you see that verb root symbol in front of it, and then the sounds that come before it. Each one of these sounds has a meaning, which I think is so cool in Tlingit. Um, fluent speakers know how to change them to get to their meaning. I'm still in a place where I'm studying the finished word and memorizing it for that specific meaning. Um, but I just think that's so cool. The L is um, the classifier and it kind of tells you that you're talking about something having a property of something. So to be green, you're talking about something that has that property of being green. And then the D is a different sound we'll get into later. And then this K can generally mean on the surface of something. So it's fun for me to start to learn these different components. They're not black and white. Um, they're not across the board the same all the time. But uh, if you start to see in the resources a verb that's broken into parts like this, um, that, that was, that's just to show the different meanings. Oh, I have a question. So ka means on the surface of something, if it's part of a word, but standing alone, it wouldn't mean that, or would it? Um, it, it's not necessarily going to mean that, but in Tlingit, ka does generally, like if you say, um, Tlingit ani ka, you are saying Tlingit ani um, thing at land and then ka on it. Um, in this case, it's related. You'll see that in other verbs um, like j. So you can replace this ka with all types of different sounds sh, j, ka, um, a few others. There's a there's a list in the intermediate resources. Um, and so j, you know, your hand is jin. And j will often mean something related to your hand in a verb. So how do you say an? 
Uh, and is an underlying K. Huh. And the, okay. Yeah. That's where my confusion is. Thank you. Okay. I'm glad you asked that because uh, you need to make sure when you're saying and that you're pronouncing it in the back of your throat. Huh. Otherwise, you could be accidentally saying on. So, uh, just like we talked about, so a ripe berry is related to this verb to say it is ripe. And similarly, um, the berry, a berry that is green sounds really similar for the phrase to say it is green. So, is their green and then if you're talking about berries the berry that's green you can call them cut so go ahead and repeat this after me cut okay so we have um i started a list for describing berries because that's one of our interests too to be able to talk about them and so um what i did in this situation is when i was scrolling through the dictionary i found example sentences mm. and i just i just pulled one and put it in here for our reference later um this doesn't mean i have to limit myself to this phrase but it's something that I can refer back to when I start to build my dialogue. So the example sentence I found is strawberries are the only fruit with seeds on the outside. And it's shuk koa chasawa akake deka nakha ayeyete. And this is a nice long phrase. Um, we'll probably look for shorter ones, but I'm keeping this in here for us to study. Supplies, when we're talking about the supplies we'll need, um, we have a basket or a berry pan, and we can practice this one. So repeat after me, just this last word, yate. Yate. Uh, and then kadadza yate. Kadadza yate. Sorry, I made this one long. Let's try it again. Kadadza yeet. Okay. And then I have an empty list for picking berries. We can get to that. And then I just kept more empty notes here for us in case we want to add. But moving on to um, example phrases. So we had kawata, we had practiced that one already. Um, in, I think in Tlingi I found a phrase meaning I asked her for berries. And we can practice this one. So this last word here is our verb. And there's three underlying X's. So go ahead and just prepare to pronounce them in the back of your throat. And <coughs> repeat after me. Uh -huh. And then this middle phrase, do ich. Do ich. And the last three words, do ich. Do ich. Do ich. And then the thing we asked for, Claire. So you'll see that um, berries comes last in English. It comes first in Tlingit. So repeat after me. Tleok. Tleok. The whole phrase. Tleok du ich hua hug. Tleok du ich hua hug. Okay. Okay, let me check the time because we've been learning vocab for like um, 30 minutes straight. So we're going to take a break from vocab and I'll show you a video just to mix it up. Um, but we will come back to different ways of preparing berries. Um, 
and we'll build a short dialogue. But first I wanna show you this video so we can change up our activity to listening and immersion. So for video study, when you're preparing um, to do an immersive activity like this, like I mentioned, you pull from multiple source resources. So not just written, but also video and audio recordings. And um, this is video is called Kaseh Kajinaq Haat Khai Kahakasti dot and it means Kaseh and Jinaq talking ab or about our foods and our way of life. So the speakers are Kaseh Selena Everson, she's Deshi Tan and Jinaak Mary Rudolph, who is Chukanede. And in the video, they talk about all different types of foods. They talk about the way things were traditionally put up, how they grew up eating them. And since we're focusing on plants today, if you want, you can really listen for, um, oh, this is about plants, I wanna pick it out. But I'm gonna leave the subtitles on. It's transcribed and translated already. And um, everyone notices different things when they watch a video. It could be the cadence that you're listening to, the way they're speaking, um, specific words. So I'm gonna leave it open for you. And um, if you want to, you can take notes, but I'm just gonna go ahead and start playing it from the beginning. We'll listen to this for about, 12, 10 to 15 minutes. Um, before I do that, are there any comments or questions? Okay. Um, make, make sure I'm sharing the sound. Chin <laughs> Oh, jeez. Three days. <laughs> The dark kind agent, Yeah. The cut wet clerk, ye are sinning at large. Achla ach east in a scout de kidle. Do it to the sheen of Jack Ekatin. Ah, what's that do a sock? Silkskin. Tadugo? Tadugo. 
Vet is kajen ejtsen. Vessa. A kéti tösse. Ja kéti tösse. Akkor technetit. Stringway. Dan a little bit. Tajanakta. Ach, ik zie het toch wat niet in. Zachter was ik ook. Kijk naar de nesteet. A kat, a kat was ik niet. To make it soft. A kat, a silken. Ik doe dat hier. Especially big one. Hoe is dat? A kat, ik ga toe. Ik ga naar nu. Chair kat, kijk dat ik zie. Klik, zo een gouden flatje naar de T1 direction. Dat was daar. Had ik al T T je toch het zo heel dan ook. Als is aan de goed zijn, goed 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 dag samen. Wat ze doen, zakken we erin nog. Tis, mhm, a cool catch a shine a siege. It's rinse, rinse, rinse with salt water. Ah, a hose, us ook just in which guns in. Oh, steak ja nog to als ik ah, a chilk. Us kan capture leave so. Used to make a hole on the beach. Ah, scum cabbage. Now a three in age. A cow with a chef. Real two in age and got the creatures. Put back the sand. I can't hear you. I can't understand you. Ink grass. Ah. Well, the cheeks are us eating. Us to cook. Us to cook. Us eating. Look on cook. It's marshmallow. I know. Dog salmon. So, with skinny. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Okay, I'm going to pause it there just in case anyone had any specific um, comments they were wanting to share about the video or phrases they noticed. I noticed deer, but I, I had a question. I um, At one point she said, ah. Clutch. Ah. What, what, adding the CH onto the mother? Word for yeah. Mother? I'm so excited you noticed that. Oh my gosh. Okay, let's do it. So put notes. And so she said, at some point she said, ah, clutch. And yeah, let me find it. Um, so when you add a CH at the end of a person's name, and when you're telling a story, what you're doing is giving emphasis to this is the new person I'm talking about. So in Tlingit storytelling, if I'm telling a story about Raven and I say Yeh, then from then on, if the story is about Yeh, then I don't need to keep saying Yeh. Everyone just knows if I'm saying he did something, everyone knows I'm talking about Yeh. So that's a pattern in story storytelling. If you're talking about a new person suddenly, then to shift focus to this person, um, this person who's doing something, that's where you add the CH. It just adds a little bit more um, focus to who you're talking about. So. Um, my mom, let me see if I can find that in the video. Um, 
Dinsdag. I'll see if I can find it and we'll we'll do more of a breakdown, but um, in the meantime, were there other comments or questions? I think she was talking about, was that when she was talking about working on berries? I don't remember. Okay, that's all right. We'll find it. But I'm glad you noticed that because you recognize probably Akhla is my mom. And this is a good phrase we should add. Um, if there's no more comments or questions, I'll show you how I'll use a video to add to my activity, my immersion activity prep. So we were watching and watching and then she said and it means my mom always worked on all types of berries and so this is something we might talk about when we're picking berries because culturally in my family if we're if we're putting up food we're talking about how that food helped us or saved us and this is might be a fun thing to talk about when you're picking berries so i'm going to copy it to cut wet and I'll put it in our phrases from the video. The cut with tail. And then I'm going to look for the next part. With the cut ye na snejin. So with the cut ye. With the cut ye na snejin. And it means uh, my mom always worked on all types of berries. I'll also add since this is these are my notes from a video and I might want to refer back to it in the video. Another thing I'll put is the time marker that that was said. So uh, if I want to refer to it, I can put the timestamp here and then look back at the video and say, oh, okay, at 7.59, she says, Can you do the literal translation there too? Because Ladakat is twice. Yeah. So the cut um the cut is all of the berries. So they translate it as all types of berries. And then with the cut ye nasnajin achla my mom always worked on. So the cut ye nasnajin. It's like she's saying, let's put it, let's put a literal translation. So I'll break it down into lines so we can do a gloss when when you yeah nasnajin akla my mom always worked on it. Um this looks like it might work. So if we do a translation beneath the cut is all. And then what is those? And then clerk is what in in English? Berries. Berry. Ah, uh, berries. And then we have what again? Those. And then the cut all. Hmm. And so for the next part, ye nasnejin always uh worked on so we'll do a smaller font 
she it actually means she worked she used to work on it used to work on it i'm putting periods to show that this is one this is um one word in english i mean in think it but it means all these things in english and then Akhtla is my mom. My mom. She used to work on it. My mom. So the last thing I would... So as a student or as a language learner myself, what I would probably do is... Like, I need more information to understand why there's stikat twice. So I might play it again and just listen and see, like, what does it sound like when she says it? So I'm going to rewind it. And then I'll also slow it down a little bit. I'll play it normal and then slow it down. Uh, <laughs> Uh, after she, I'm done. Yeah, there's a lot of good language here. I'm going to play it again. But did you see what she was doing with her hand the second time she said the cut? So this gives us a little bit of a visual cue. So let me play it one more time. Uh. So, yeah, I'm not sure. That's a good question. But it's, it looks like it's emphasized. She worked on all the berries, all the berries. Yeah. You know, a point of emphasis. Yeah. I think that's a really good um, observation. Yeah, I think so too. Um, okay, you guys, we only have one minute left, but were there any more comments or questions you wanted to share before we close? I just thought of one more berry and the Nagoon berry. Oh, yeah. Let's add it. So we'll put them under berries. And we'll do this one. So... I'll do Nagun. Nagun is the Thinget word for Nagun. Okay. Nagun. And let me just spell check it really quick. Oh, it's high tone. Nagun. Oh, and then in English it's spelled Nagun berry. Mm -hmm. So Nagun. So let's practice this one. Um, uh, repeat after me. Nagoon. Nagoon. Uh, Nagoonberry. Right. Uh, okay, good question. So next week we'll continue on um, some of the other things I wanted to do with this domain reclamation activity is make a dialogue. And so we can start thinking in the coming week before our next class if we were to take all these phrases and and names we learned um how could we make a dialogue out of this so we can kind of we'll make a practice dialogue starting with before you go berry picking um what do you want to go for what do we need and we'll just we'll just work on it and um yeah um, thanks for your work and I um, feel happy we're learning Klingit together. I'll see you next week. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Good night. So one thing, I know it's too late to add it, but about where the berries are, the plants, um, mm -hmm. there are no trees and it grows in a sunny spot. They grow in a sunny spot. 
That'd be mm -hmm. interesting to learn that too. Oh yeah. So I'll try to remember that for next time. Okay, I'll add it in our English section in our notes too.